In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a factor analysis in Smart PLS. So let's say you have a basic model like this. We have four factors, each with uh, several indicators. Let's just run it. And now we can look at these loadings. Now, notice they're all reflective uh, constructs. So everything we see here is a loading rather than a weight. Um, formative variables use weights. Uh, reflective use loadings. So we want the loadings to average out to about 0.7 or more for every factor. Looks like this is pretty good up here. Look over here on the right, satisfaction with work, very good. Unsupportive boss, very good. Uh, burnout from customers, good. Nah. Ooh, not good. These are good. Okay, so it looks like burnout from customers three and four have some issues. So one thing we could do is simply remove uh, three and four, starting with one at a time. Because we have six items, it is reflective, which means the uh, items are interchangeable and basically say the same thing. So replacing or uh, removing one should not affect us too much. So I'm going to remove BC4 since it has the lowest loading. Run it again. Looks like BC3 is still a problem. Delete that one. Run it again. And looks like we're good. It averages out above 0.7. Uh, none of the others should have changed. And there we go. You have a, a, a good measurement model. Now, you can also go look at this in the default report. Go look at the PLS, outer loadings, and you'll see a very clean pattern matrix right here. Now, if you'd like to see what the cross loadings are for uh, discriminant validity purposes, go down to quality criteria and go to cross loadings. Now, this is a mess, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and go over to Excel, paste it, and then I'm going to do some conditional formatting real quick. Highlight cell rules, if greater than, let's use 0.5. Okie dokie. Oh, that fixed things up real nice. Very nice, very nice. And now you can see where all the strongest loadings are. And it looks like it's very clean. And there are no major cross loadings. A major cross loading would be where uh, one of the loadings on another factor is less than uh, 0.2 away from a loading on its primary factor. So this looks very good. Now let's go back. Let's say you have uh, one, let's say one of these is a formative factor. Let's just this is just hypothetical here. So I'm going to right click, invert the measurement model. Arrows are now pointing inward. Let's hit run. What you see here, these are not loadings. These are weights. These are loadings. Anything on a reflective is automatically a loading, um, and then automatically on the formative ones, it displays weights. You can see this also over on the default report. Let's recreate it. If you go over here to loadings, you'll see that on burnout, these are not the values that were shown on the model, but these are. The 0 0.58, 0 0.31, you'll see here 0 0.58, 0 0.31. And so these are the loadings. Now, determining validity of items on a formative factor it is still an issue of debate, and there is actually, at the time of creating this video, there is no agreed upon best practice for uh, validity for items on a, a formative factor. Mostly this is left up to good logic, um, conceptual, what's the word, um, sufficiency, you know, have you covered your grounds, um, and then multicollinearity, do, do the items overlap too much? So you can do a test for multicollinearity among the items to see if all the items are necessary. And that's about all you can do at this point for formative, uh, for formative factor validity. And that's how you do it.